Maximizing the likelihood. So far we have talked about the structure of the model and how to calculate probabilities, either the joint probability, marginal probability or conditional probability. But how can the parameters of the network be learned if some data is given? This is typically done by maximum likelihood estimation. So one tries to tune the parameters such that the likelihood of the data being produced by the model is maximized. A typical way to do this would be a gradient descent. So we have to figure out what is the gradient of the model with respect to the parameters. Let's start by taking the logarithm of the probability of the visible units because that is what we want to um, optimize. Right? We don't care so much about the hidden units. The main point is that the probability of the visible units are correct. Now, written with a free energy, if we take the logarithm of the probability of x, we get these two terms here. And that is the likelihood, or the log likelihood. Yeah. Given the parameters of the model that are not explicitly written here in this expression. Okay, so if we take the derivative of that, let's first consider the parameters in a more abstract form and indicate them by theta. Then we take the derivative of the logarithm of p of x with respect to any of the parameters. That means we have to take the derivatives of these two terms with respect to theta, and because of the logarithm here, that would be outer derivative times inner derivative. We get this product here. The partition function is given by the sum over x over all possible states of the network of the visible units times the exponential of minus the free energy. And if we take the derivative of that with respect to theta, again we have outer derivative times inner derivative, we get this expression. Now this is again just the probability of x dash if we also take into account the partition function here. Okay, so this holds for any parameter where we want to calculate the derivative. And that means, so if we have this gradient, we can calculate a learning rule for the fetters by averaging over all the data points that we have. Right, so we take the gradient of our likelihood, log likelihood, with respect to our parameters averaged over all data points. If we now plug in the gradient that we have just calculated, we get this expression and this means on the left side we calculate the empirical mean over the derivative of the free energy with respect to the per, uh, parameter. That would be this thing here, right? Because 1 over m sum over x tilde is simply calculating the empirical mean or average over our data points of this expression. While on the right side, we calculate the true average over all possible states x weighted with the probability p of x. So both are averages, as we see here, if you write these with these angular brackets, both are averages over the derivative of the free energy with respect to the parameter, but on the left side it's an empirical average over the data, and on the right side it's the average over the 
model distribution. So for all possible states weighted by the probability given by the model. And it's somewhat intuitive that the gradient is driven by the difference between something that we calculate from the data distribution and something that we calculate by the model distribution. If these two di distributions are identical, so if the empirical distribution is identical to the model distribution, then the gradient vanishes and the system has converged. So taking the derivative of the free energy with respect to any parameter would lead to this. This is the definition of the free energy from above. Now, equation 18. Then, because of the logarithm, we take the outer derivative. So this is the 1 over the argument here. Right? This is the power of minus 1 and the inner derivative. Again here we take the outer derivative times the inner derivative, right? That's the exponential. Um, that stays an exponential and then we take the inner derivative, inner derivative of minus e with respect to uh, theta and that is this part together with this minus sign. Now we add a 1 over z, which is the partition function, factor on both sides, so with, that we can write 1 over z exponential here, this is now the original energy, not the free energy, right, as simply p of x and h dash on both sides, right, so we replace, that was the first equation that we um, was given, uh, that's the definition of our p of x h. This here, since we sum over all possible states of the hidden units, is the probability of x. Right? We marginalize over h, so we are left with p of x. Then, because of the minus 1 here, we can divide this by p of x, that would be this one here. And this here, by simply Bayesian formalism, is p of h given x. Now we use the property that the hidden units are statistically independent given the hidden un uh, given the visible units. Right, so we can write p of h given x as a product of the p of h j's given x. Okay, so we have this in mind here, or also this one here. Yeah, actually we start with this one here, and now we use, uh, consider concrete variables. So if we calculate the derivative with respect to b, or bi, one concrete bias value, um, and these are the bias values for the visible layer, we take the equation that we've just derived, and we calculate the energy function with respect to b. Now remember, Okay, maybe we should go up to the energy function that we had at the very beginning. So this is our energy function. It's the inner product between x and b, the inner product, so minus the inner product of x and b, minus the inner product of c and h, minus the product of x transpose w h, which is a bilinear form with the matrix w. And if you take here the derivative of this energy with respect to b, we get the corresponding xi. So if we, if we take the derivative with respect to bi, we get xi. If you take it with respect to ci, we get hi. And if you take it with respect to wij, we get xi and hj. 
times aj hj xi times a hj okay so if we take the derivative of e with respect to bi we simply get minus xi since this does not depend on h, we can move this here to the front. Then we have this one here. And if we sum p of h given x over all possible states of h, then because of the normalization condition, this has to be 1. Right? So we are simply left with minus xi. Okay, now we take the derivative with respect to C. Now, we have a symmetry in the network, but that does not mean that we get the same result, because in the uh, der uh, derivation that we just did, we took the derivative of x with respect to the bias value of that x. If we would calculate the derivative of f of h, which we have uh, not actually defined, but which could be defined in a similar way, um, by c then we would get a very then we would get just get minus hi here but here we actually take the derivative of x which is the visible units with respect to the bias of the hidden units so we have a different situation okay but we said that if we take the derivative of e with respect to cj we get minus hj Then again, we use the statistical independence of the hidden units given the visible units. So we can write p of h given x as a product of all the p of h um, j dash given x. So we move the, move the minus sign to the front and also the h j to the front and we move the one term in this product here that corresponds to this hj also to the front. So then we are left here with the product over j dash not equal j, because the j term is here, of p of h j dash given x. Now if you consider the two different values that hj can assume, that would be 0 and 1. And we see that the value 0 does not contribute. And if we take hj equals 1, then this factor disappears. And here we, and for this one, we simply have p of hj equals 1 given x. Right? So we do not need to sum over the two different values of hj. That means the sum goes only over all the other components. We have further up defined capital H minus j as the vector of um, h values uh, that do not contain hj and that's the same here so this is this sum does not go over all the hidden units but all but the jth one so now since we do not sum over hj, we can also move this to the very front, and then we, the sum goes here, and then we can swap the two rows, and since the product does not go over j, um, that goes along with the sum not summing over j, so everything is fine, we can swap the sum of the product like we did further above, and we get this expression. Now again, because of normalization condition, the probability of getting either h equals 0 or h equals 1 is 1 because, I mean, one of the two values has to be, um, has to be, has to be sampled, has to be chosen. So this is 1 and the whole thing simplifies to minus p of hj equals 1 given x. Now we have seen above that this is the sigma function, right? That's the, normal activation function of, an, of a unit in a neural network and we've defined this as yj of x. Yeah. So the derivative 
of f of x with respect to the bias value cj is simply the activation of the hidden unit j from the input x. So the last derivative that we need is the one with respect to wij. So we've seen then the derivative of e with respect to wij is simply the product of xi and hj. xi does not depend on the sum index here, so we can move it to the front. Then we are left with this one here. And we have a similar, very similar So we have this expression here, maybe we can it fits in. Yeah. So this one here almost it fits almost, right? So this one here equals this one, so we can do the same procedure and then get minus xi because we have this additional xi here, minus xi yj of x. So now we have all the derivatives and Thereby we can formulate our learning rules. Um, so dBi equals the average over xi tilde minus the average over xi. And in vector notation it looks like this. And likewise, the derivative of uh, or the learning rule for the bias value of the hidden units would be the average, the empirical average over the activation of the hidden unit minus the true model average over the activation of the hidden units and in vector notation it looks like this and the learning rule for the wij's would be the product of these x and j x and y terms in the averages now that looks like we are done we have a learning rule but while the first average can be calculated, if we have 1,000 data points, we have to formulate, to calculate the average over 1,000 expressions here, but this on the right side potentially would have to be um, averaged over all possible states of x. And if you imagine you have 100 units, 100 visible units, that would be 2 to the power of 100, which is just prohibitive. So we have to find a way to approximate this term, so the mo average over the model distribution. This is the data distribution, average over the data distribution, and this is the average over the model distribution. So one way to do this is to sample from the model. So rather than really going through all values and weight them with the probability of getting these values, we simply sample from the model and then we take the average over these samples. So that's uh, what's indicated here. So this is the true average over some function of x, where x goes over the 2 to the power of 100 values, let's say. So, and that's spelled out. I mean, if you have this angular bracket notation, that truly means, um, means this one, so we go over all possible values of x and we weight it by the probability of getting x times the function that we want to um, estimate, the function that we want to calculate the mean of. Now if we can sample from the model, we can replace this by an empirical mean where we just take 1 over n and we sum over all the sample values that we have. So now how do we sample from a network? Well, we have um, in the beginning I've stated that one can do that by sampling back and forth, right? So we can initialize the input layer with some data values. Then given these, we can sam sample these values and then given these, we can sample these values, and we can do this very often back and forth, and then um, 
the whole system will converge towards the model distribution and that would produce samples from the model distribution. However, that still takes a lot of time. So what one actually does is one samples just once back and forth. Uh, so this can be maybe um, So here we have our network. So this is the input layer and with the we 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 initialize this somehow, right? Then we sample the hidden units um and then from the hidden units we sample the input units and then from the input units we sample the hidden units again. Right? And then we would take these two as sort of empirical values that go into the data, dis uh, data mean and these two as model values, model samples that go into the model mean. So this is sort of the least you would like to do, right? So you have one pair for the data and one pair for the model. You could go move on, right? You could do this a couple of times uh, and then of course you get better values but it is expensive, comes at some cost. So this method is called contrastive divergence, right? So where you um, where you sample back and forth from the input layer to the hidden layer, and then back to the input layer, and then through the hidden layer again, and you use this data. So the first two values go into this expression, and the second two uh, go into this expression. If you do this only once back and forth, this is called CD1 because you're only going once back and forth. If you go back and forth five times, that would be CD5. But CD1 is quite popular because it's relatively cheap. Okay, so now we have the structure of the network. We know how to calculate the probabilities and we know how to train the system. Now, Training the system looks fine with this equation, it works, but it's still sort of a tricky business. I'm, for instance, if you train it with uh, contrastive divergence, for some time the log likelihood gets better and better and better, and at some point it gets worse again, right? So we have to figure out when to stop. Uh, so there are all kinds of little tricks to, and tweaks to make this work, but in, the principal idea uh, works like explained here.